a couple have been married for 50 years and the husband got a massive heart attack and he survived the heart attack he was nursed back to health by his wife and from that day on the wife was very strict in what the husband ate he was on low fat no sugar no fizzy drinks nothing he was on a very strict diet so, so much so he was so um, geared to only eating these foods so whenever he'd go he'd ask where the, these brand muffins are and where this is and that is and you don't have just the low low fat stuff anyway 10 years after that uh, they both met in a car accident and died and went to heaven well they lived good lives therefore they went to heaven and saint peter welcomed them at the pearly gates and took them to their their dwelling in heaven it was a magnificent house it had large rooms large bathroom jacuzzis and, and outside there was this magnificent spread of food and so um, the, the man was delighted and Peter said have him to eat and then we'll come back later and I'll take you out uh, to meet all the others so they have uh, they go out and he's looking for all the brand muffins and the low fat food there's nothing there's all full of fat and full of sugar and everything anyway he kind of ate a little bit of everything and then they went out late for lunch so Peter introduced them to all the people there and and then again another banquet there and they go um, and there's all the food and he asked him Peter where's where's the low fat stuff the less sugar stuff and Peter says brother this is heaven you don't have to worry about any of these things anyway the guy goes and eats whatever he wants and comes back and then night is the big banquet and everyone's dancing as or music and everything and again St. Peter welcomes them introduces a few other people and again said he asked them, Peter uh, look where's the low fat stuff and where's the diet food Peter says brother you don't get it this is heaven you can eat whatever you want you're not going to put on any weight you know you're not going to die you know you're going to be you're going to be fine at that point the man got so upset and so angry he turned to his wife and said if it wasn't for your brand muffins and diet food I would have been here 10 years ago And so often in life, we forget how much God provides for us. In all the readings today, we are told of the providence of God, that God provides in abundance for us. And He provides for us not just to eat and be satisfied on earth, but He provides for us those opportunities to help us to get to heaven. And Jesus is always encountering the resistance of the scribes and Pharisees and today's gospel comes as part of three parables but it comes in the last week of Jesus's life on earth this is basically the holy week this gospel unfolds the parable is told to the chief priests and scribes and in fact it's a very shocking parable and disturbing story where the king who celebrated the wedding feast of the sun invites whom he thinks are the great subjects of his kingdom the noble families the, the people who are close to him and when the time comes to go and call them in for the feast the excuses they give is so lame so lame so much so they're kind of indifferent to this invitation to this huge banquet it is the feast of their lifetime away. It's the crown prince's wedding. There couldn't be a greater celebration in the kingdom. And yet they all give excuses. And so often we are told about many excuses that people give in our life. About coming to Mass, the greatest banquet offered for us is the Eucharist. And the many lame excuses people give is, I mean, they're very creative. You know, they, they, they say, oh, um, you ask someone, uh, I do lots of interviews for, for families, and I ask someone, if the parents know, uh, which mass do you go to? And uh, they would say a mass time that was long, long time ago. Um, they, they got the time wrong. And then others would give me a correct time and then it will be only on special occasions they'd come to Mass. 
And there was once I met a parent and asked them, um, do you go to, where do you go to Mass? Oh, we come here, Father, this is our parish. And I said, oh, when, when did you come to Mass? I haven't seen you for a little while. Oh, Father, we, we come for Christmas and for Easter. And this mom was so serious. I mean, it was not like she was kidding or anything. She was serious. So we do come. This is our parish. We belong to this parish. We come for Christmas and Easter. For the two great feasts. But what about all the other Sundays in the year? The day where the Eucharist is offered for us. So we can participate in this heavenly banquet. The excuses people give. Oh, this is the only... It's the only time we get to spend with our as a family because we all work and we all are very busy and Sunday is the only day we get to spend as a family. We get to do things together. Can you imagine the indifference that people show to Jesus in the Eucharist Mass? That's the worst part. They haven't got a reasonable excuse. They can't say, Father, I was in hospital for three months. No, I was bedridden for two months. I couldn't get up and go anywhere. But the excuses are so lame. No wonder at the gospel we are told that when all the people arrive, the king comes to greet you know, the people who are perhaps the least of the subjects in his kingdom, perhaps on the on Lord's kingdom, but they've been invited to the banquet and they've arrived. And the king notices one person, one man, without the wedding garment. Now the understanding is that in royal weddings, you know, people come eloquently dressed, and in other places, the king provides the best outfits so that they can all be beautifully presented and celebrate this great feast of the wedding. So you see, all those who are poor, who are traveling, they all come in, they all make the effort to get into this wedding garment the king has provided. And they're all celebrating. Therefore, when the king walks around and sees everyone celebrating except this one man who hasn't got the garment on, he's wondering, what's happened here? Did he not get a garment? Did they, did, was he left out? He must be feeling terribly bad in all this crowd where everyone's dressed up and he's not. So the king goes to him and says, my friend, why haven't you got your wedding garment on? And the man has nothing to say. It's like, well, there was a party on, I just rocked up. Come as you are, that's what they said, so here I am. No, you don't come as you are to the king's banquet. You come presented quite well. And so the king who said to him, friend, is now furious. He says, you made no effort to even put on the garment I gave you. You don't even deserve to be here, but Having been here, I provided you the garment. Even then, you are so indifferent. You couldn't be bothered. And as a result, you cannot be part of the celebration. And that's why he's thrown out. Bound hand and foot and thrown out, not just sent out. When we are baptized, we've been given this awesome gift, this garment of grace. When our original sin is washed away, we are given this garment of grace so that we can enter humbly yet proudly into the celebration as a child of God. And yes, we all make mistakes in life. We commit various sins, small sins, big sins. But that is why we have the sacrament of reconciliation. We need to go to the sacrament so that we can be purified and cleansed and given the strength to celebrate what God is offering us. So often when we sin, we are in the dumps. We can't celebrate. Even when people are celebrating, we are upset, we are angry, we are hurt, we feel left out and abandoned. Because sin keeps us away from celebration. Celebrating God's love for us. So it's very important that we make an effort every day to remember what God does for us each day. Even in this lockdown, you are able to participate in Mass every day if you wanted to. Now even then, think about it. Now how do you present yourself a Mass? Now there was a cartoon uh, some months ago where uh, it said the churches are opened up now and there's a minister preaching from the pulpit and a couple of parishes sitting in the front and then one lady rocks into the door. She's got a coffee mug in, her, in one hand and, and, and pajamas on. She's come to church after three months. She's forgotten how to dress to go to Mass. 
there was a funny cartoon, but no, the way it's real. I mean, how many of you are presenting yourselves well now as you're participating in mass? How many of you have got your pajamas on watching mass today? These are all little things that help us to realize where we are going, what we are doing. And I know some of you watch this mass recorded later. Well, I suppose if that's what you can do, that's what you can do. But it's hard enough not being able to come to mass. The next best thing is to be able to participate in mass that is being celebrated live. So you can be present while the mass is being offered. I mean, you can watch a recorded mass from 10 years ago you'll still be hearing Mass. It's not a live Mass. It's not Mass being offered here that you're participating in, where you can send your angels to be present at the altar, at the consecration. You see, there's so many things that we can do and do well in life, especially if you're going to Mass. And how often you've come late to Mass, left early, looked at your watch when I'm preaching a bit too long, what's how long half will speak for today, you know? We somehow we get caught up in the pleasures of the world that somehow mass is depriving us from living our life somehow by going to church and staying a little bit longer at mass that we are being deprived of doing something else no everything you do should lead you to this moment to the Eucharist to the sacrifice how can we expect to get to heaven if we can't even come to the banquet on earth Some years ago, I mean, I haven't done this many times, but I think three times in my life, I've woken up crying with dreams. Now, when I was growing up, I was little. Um, I was told, you know, by my Catholic teacher, you know, God has given us this beautiful angel to be on our right-hand side, uh, and we also got this devil on our left-hand side, and the devil's got this big black book, uh, and the angel's got this beautiful golden book, and every time you do something good, the angel takes out a gold pen and writes in gold all the good work that you're doing. And every time you do something bad, the devil's very, very happy and he writes in blood on this book. So at the end of your life, when you go and stand before God, the angel Michael will come and hold up the scales, like you see in the pictures of St. Michael. And the devil will put his book on one side, the angel put the book on the other side. And Whichever book goes down, whichever book is heavier, that's where you're going to end up. So if the angel's book goes down, then you're going to get into heaven. If not, you're going to go right down there. So imagine I was traumatized as a child as a little story. But many years after that, I think it was only about 10 years ago, I woke up crying because the angel's book like missed it by that much and I didn't get into heaven. That's one of my three times I woke up crying in my life. And I'm thinking, my God, I don't want to be like this, not going to heaven. And so too in all of us, we think we are doing everything right, but we have to examine ourselves truly and see the way we live our life. Is the Eucharist the center of your life? Because it was the center of the saints' lives. That's how the saints became saints, because Jesus was the center of their life. The Eucharist was the source and summit of every saint's life. We don't want to miss out on heaven. We don't want our children to miss out on heaven. We don't want anyone to miss out on heaven. And that is why in the, the way we dispose ourselves to participate in Mass says a lot of how we live our life on earth with God's grace getting to heaven. So as we come to this Eucharist, let's remember that the Good Shepherd is the one who always leads us to this eternal banquet. Let us follow the shepherd. As St. Paul said, no matter what his difficulties and hardships are, whether he was feasting or fasting or starving in good times and bad, Jesus was a strength, was a source of the strength. So let the good shepherd be the source of our strength, the one to guide us in this life, in the difficult times and all the struggles. To help us to experience his presence in the Eucharist, to be comforted by his presence on earth, so one day with his grace we would reach heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.